Hi, I'm Police Constable Saeed Hussain. I'm part of Police Scotland's Cybercrime Harm Prevention Team. I'd like to provide you with some valuable information in relation to how you can protect your charity from cyber criminals. So let's get started. Now, charities in Scotland range from large internationally recognised organisations to small local community ones. There are over 24,020 charities registered in Scotland with a combined annual income of £13.7 billion. Now, recently in the 2022 Cybersecurity Breaches Survey, 30% of UK charities identified a cyber attack in the last 12 months. Of those attacks, 38% had an impact on the service, with 19% resulting in a negative outcome. Now, why is the charity sector particularly vulnerable? Now, the charity sector faces the same cyber risks as private sector and government organisations, but there are some reasons why charities could be particularly vulnerable to a cyber attack. Number one being, charities are attractive targets. Next, reluctance to enhance cyber security than on frontline charitable work. Part-time staff have less time to absorb security procedures. We have reliance on staff to use personal IT, which is less easy to secure. And last but not least, the impact on a charity, limited funds and minimal insurance. Now, who, uh, who might target the charity sector? Now, cyber criminals make no distinction between charities and businesses. However, their motivation may differ. For instance, cyber criminals are motivated by financial gain. They may seek to directly steal funds held by charities or seek to capitalize indirectly through fraud, extortion, or data theft. There's a growing availability of criminal services for hire. The offender can buy off the shelf services from another criminal group and so do not need to have advanced technical skills themselves. Now, this change has led to an increase in the scale of cybercrime, with criminals indiscriminately targeting all organisations. Next, we have is nation states who conduct cyber activities to further their own national agenda and prosperity, or to disrupt professionals working on issues the state disagrees with. Now, this includes human rights or those wanting regime change, the UK charities most at risk from national state attacks are those that operate either directly or through local partner organisations overseas. Now, also, those charities which play a role in helping formulate and deliver UK domestic and foreign policy. Next, we have is hacktivists. Now, this is a term used to describe computer hackers motivated by a specific cause, for example, to further political or personal agendas or a reaction to events or actions they perceive as unjust. Hacktivists have successfully used distributed denial of services tax to, distribute, uh, to disrupt websites or have exploited weak security to deface them. Now, the charity sector is not a priority target for hacktivists, but even a limited website takedown or defacement could have financial, operational, or reputational implications. Insider threats is a deliberate or accidental threat to an organization's security from someone who has authorized access, such as employee, volunteer, contractor, or supplier. They may be motivated by a variety of reasons, such as grievance against organization, ethical concerns about its activity, or have financial pressures leaving them vulnerable to coercion. However, these are not always malicious, and breaches of security can stem from unclear processes, lack of training, or just simply mistakes. Now, charities may be more vulnerable due to a high turnover of staff. For example, if a lot of volunteers are involved, and if there is limited staff training or security monitoring. And last but not least, supply chain attacks. It's common, especially for smaller charities, to outsource their responsibilities for running, maintaining and securing their IT and data to specialist support companies. Now, what are the main methods of cyber attacks? Firstly, you have phishing, 
This is when criminals use scam emails, text messages, or phone calls to trick their victims. Now, the aim is often to make you visit a website which may download a virus onto your computer or steal bank details or other personal information. Now, phishing is often untargeted in the form of mass email, text, or cold calling campaign. The outward facing nature of charities culture of trust in the sector, reliance on volunteers, staff members using personal IT, and reluctance to spend limited funding on cyber tra security training and measures could make them particularly vulnerable to criminality. Next, we have fake organisations and websites. Criminals can exploit the credibility and appeal of charities to trick donors into giving money to what appears to be a legitimate charity, or they can set up fake charities to impersonate well-known charity names to add credibility in phishing campaigns. Although not directly targeting charities by cyber means, this activity has potential financial and reputational ramifications for genuine charities. And... Next, we have business email compromise. Business email compromise is a form of phishing attack where a criminal attempts to trick someone into transferring funds or revealing sensitive information. Now, in BEC, a cyber criminal initially compromises a business email account through social engineering or computer intrusion techniques. Now, after using this access to check out the organization, the criminal then pretends to be the account owner over email or phone conversations to redirect payments to fraudulent bank accounts. And last but not least, we have ransomware, which is the most harmful cybercrime threat to the UK today. It's a type of malware which prevents you from accessing your device and the data stored on it, usually by encrypting your files. Now, a criminal group will then demand a ransom in exchange of decrypt, uh, decryption while threatening to delete or leak the data they have stolen. Now, the technique is now so evolved that criminal groups offer ransomware as a service, whereby ransomware variants and commodity listings are available off the shelf for a one-off payment or a share of the profits. Now, how to improve your charity's cybersecurity? We strongly encourage that all charities read and implement the NCSC's guidance that has been especially created for charities along with NCSC's cyber awareness training. Further, Cyber Essentials is a government-backed scheme that will help protect your organization from cyber attacks and convince potential donors that you take cybersecurity seriously. Thank you so much for taking time out to listen to this update, which I hope you found beneficial. Thank you again.